Hello, um, so this tutorial is going to go through a fairly introductory uh, Dynamo kind of uh, lesson where we'll be using this model that we've been using for the other exercises um, and we'll do a, a fairly basic kind of uh, count of all of the desks in each of the offices that we have here. So you'll see on this floor I've just kind of laid out um, some offices, some desks and some of the offices and we're going to basically just be doing a, a script that will uh, count all those and a assign a, a value per office of how many desks are inside that they can then down be used downstream um, for scheduling or you can even kind of create uh, we can create like a new tag that will show that on this plan if you wanted to so that might be like a useful application for something like that um, to visually uh, display it so the first thing before we get into Dynamo is we're gonna have to create a room parameter uh, to hold the desk count so you'll see out of the box Room objects don't really have um, anything related to desks, obviously. Um, so we'll create something. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to need to create a shared parameter. Um, so I'll just come here, and I'll have to create a new group. I'll just call it room demo or something. Um, I'll create a new parameter. I'll call it desk count. And this is going to be an integer. Um, we can only really have full number of desks per room. We're not going to have like a half desk or anything like that. Um, and we'll leave everything else. We'll say OK, OK. And then we'll come over to Project Parameters and we'll add that uh, parameter from here. So we'll come to Shared Parameters. We'll see our desk count. And this is going to be an instance parameter that gets applied to rooms. So this is kind of the dialogue where if you had a shared parameter that you were using on a project, um, you would come here to kind of apply it to different uh, Revit category objects um, in this interface here. And then if we wanted to, we can say this is like identity data or whatever. We can always come back and change this. Um, but I'll, I'll put it as identity data. Um, and all right, so that should be good. So now if we come to our uh, room object again, we should now see this parameter here called desk count that's under identity data. And we can put in numbers there manually, of course. Um, so if I wanted to come through, I can say, you know, this is one, and then here is going to be four. Um, but if we were to kind of try to do this manually, it would take a fairly long time, particularly if we were doing this on multiple floors and, and that kind of thing. And if things are changing throughout the project, we want to have a script that we can run that will just automatically recount all that for us. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. Um, so open up Dynamo, and we'll just create a new, once it opens, we'll create a new Dynamo uh, definition here. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is grab all the rooms. So we'll look for uh, so categories. So this is just going to give us a drop down of all the categories. I'm just going to pull out a bunch of stuff, and then we'll kind of start to connect things. Um, all elements of category. You kind of have to take some practice to just like know what to search for in Dynamo. The search functionality is pretty terrible, um, so it could it could take some time sometimes. Um, so room name and so the reason I'm getting the room names is I'm gonna want to right now it's on automatic. Um, I'm gonna turn this into manual for a second. Um, so I want to basically isolate just the offices because I don't want to, if I were to kind of further down the line, have a desk in some other type of room, um, I only want to focus on the offices for this exercise. Um, so I'm going to come down to rooms for categories here. And so then I'm going to do, uh, let me just type office here. And I'm going to just search if the room name contains office. So um, if you right click, you can also do the search. Um, I find that it is a little bit buggy. It doesn't always like 
stay open when you do the right click version. Um, anyway, so we'll search for the word office. And then by default, if you hover over here, it'll tell you what the defaults are. So the default is to not ignore the case. In this case, I do want to ignore the case. So I'll right click and search for Boolean. And I'll tell it to ignore the case. Um, and let's just run that to make sure it works. OK, so it looks like we have a list that has whether or not the room has the word office in it. So that looks like it's working. And then what we're going to do is do a filter by Boolean mask. So this is a very common uh, component that you'll be using when you're working in Dynamo. Um, so we're just going to take our original elements or the rooms, which is kind of what we want. Um, and then we're going to use this as a mask. So the mask is generally just a list of trues and false values. And basically anything that's true, this is a, the sort of wording here is a little bit confusing, but anything that's a true is going to come out of the in, and anything that's a false is going to come out of the out. Um, why they don't just call it true and false, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, so the next step is going to be we want to get the desk family. That's what the family that we're going to be counting. Um, so we'll do a search here for uh, family types, this one, and family, if I can count, if I can type instance, uh, I think there's like a family instance by family type or something. I'm going to try searching for it here. Not sure why it was that far down the list. That's exactly what I was typing. Um, but anyway, all right. So we'll come down to here, and we'll say the desk family type, and that's going to give us a, a list of all the family instances. So what we want to do is basically we want to find out whether that desk family falls inside of the room. Um, so there is a few approaches we can take here. The approach I'm going to use in this tutorial is going to use a component called the room is, it's called room is inside room. It should really be called point is inside room. Um, but that's what we're going to use. And we're going to feed it our rooms um, and then our list of points, which is going to be, we, so from each of these family instances, we're going to need a location point. So we're going to grab the location. I think there's one that's specific to family instances. Here. So it's family instance dot location. So different types of Revit elements will have different types of locations. So if you have a wall or a beam, for example, those are going to return a curve as, a, as their location. Um, but things like uh, a sort of vertical column or a uh, family instance will always return a point. So we'll do this uh, room is inside point or is inside whatever it is, uh, room dot is inside room. And this should tell us whether or not um, that point falls inside. Now, if I just run this now, you'll see that I kind of get this not so useful list of ob uh, list here because this is giving me just um, uh, this is kind of defaulting to the shortest list so I'm only really checking that first room what I want to do and I'm not going to go in this tutorial I'm not going to go too much into all these lacing options you can kind of look on the uh, dynamo primer to get like a better understanding of these but we want to do a cross product in this case because we want to check for all the points um, we want to check them against all the rooms so this is going to basically give us a list of each room and whether or not the point, each of these, I think there's 20-something points, whether or not they fell inside of it. Um, 
one, if we were to have a really large project with a large number of rooms and a large number of points, um, we might want to kind of begin to filter this by level and so that it wouldn't get too compl computationally expensive where we're comparing tons of rooms and points. In this case, there's not that many rooms and not that many families, so it's, it's fairly doable. Um, and then there is a component uh, called, uh, I think it's like count true, list count true here. So what we want from here is just we just want a list of the counts of for each of these. And oh, again, I'm going to want to do uh, a cross product because um, I want the count for each of the sublists not just the overall uh, count. So this is going to be for each room object the sort of count of the number of desks that are in there. So this is good. I have nine uh, uh, numbers here that are going to match the nine elements that I have coming out of out of here. So um, the last step in this process will be to set the parameter. Um, set I always have trouble searching for this. Um, set parameter by name. And the parameter name here is going to be desk count. And then these are going to be our values. And then I can. No, I should probably save it, but whatever. I'm going to run this. Um, and so now we should come be able to come into here and check if this worked. So if I tab select into a room, that desk count looks correct. And I can check another one. So it looks like it worked. Um, so what it did is it kind of went through and assigned that count to each of these rooms. Um, so that's pretty much the Dynamo portion of the, of the tutorial. Uh, if I wanted to, kind of a, like another step I might want to do would be to create uh, a new version of this tag that would also reference the desk count if I wanted. Um, so let's just uh, kind of do that really quickly. So if I were to edit this family, this tag family here, um, I can come in here and create like a new type maybe. Um, so I'll do, uh, so I, I'd, I'd done this before, so you'll actually see I have this parameter here called show desk count. Um, but I'll create a new type. Um, I'll call it room tag with number, and I'll just say DC for desk count. I actually want to make sure that these other ones don't show that. All right. Um, so now what I can do here is I want to basically add like a, a label. So I'll just create a copy of this. Then I'm going to change the label here to be a uh, desk count. Um, so I'm going to need to insert this uh, desk count from my shared parameters file. And I'll say OK. And then I'll use that. I'm going to remove the number. And if I wanted to, I can prefix this maybe with DC for desk count. And the sample value, I'll just put a 0. And all right, so that should be good. So that'll be our sort of default prefix. And now we can kind of save this and load it into the project. I'll just overwrite the existing version. So if I were to come here and go to that new type, let's see if it worked. So now you'll see here um, that it has like the DC for desk count and it'll tell me four. So this is useful if you're, uh, you know, just for as you're going, if you want to have a plan where you can kind of quickly see 
um, how many desks are in each room. In this case, there's not that many desks in, in any of these offices, so it, it's a little bit redundant. But if you say had a plan where you had uh, lar much larger offices and you didn't want to manually count them, you can kind of create a tag that will allow you to quickly see how many desks are in each room. All right, I'll stop it there, uh, and thanks.